Now, the stock solutions. Uh, yesterday, I, I just for convenience, I talked about making stock bottles of 1,000 cc, so that's why if you have any of your figures there, not may not quite jive. But anyway, we're trying to make a 50% solution. And what you do, I, I measured it out. I used Bronson's sodium ascorbate powder, and I measured out um, 500 grams one time and found that it had a dry volume of 600 cc's. So if you're using a 500 cc bottle, you bring the uh, dry powder up to the 300 cc line and then add water sufficient to fill up the bottle up to the, and just regular water uh, for injection uh, up to the 500 cc line and then I uh, add one gram of this disodium EDTA, you know, the, the stuff that we're using for chelation therapy. And the purpose behind that is to chelate the, any stray uh, atoms of copper or iron that would, would uh, enzymatically destroy the solution. So this is the stock solution. Now, a trick that we discovered is that if you're going to make the bottle up before you're going to use it, say, several days. I mean, my nurses, find they, they like to make it all at once because you run the bottles. We use glass bottles. Uh, you run them through the, the uh, autoclave and all that. We have a sterile funnel to pour it in and all that. And uh, so they like to make up more than one bottle at once. And so the problem is that when you mix up ascorbate, uh, sodium ascorbate, it turns yellow pretty rapidly. And this yellow is... Uh, dehydroascorbate, and so the clearer, or it's always clear, but but the uh, the less color in it, the more the more potent. So what we discovered was is that if you don't mix it up, and you just let the sodium ascorbate sit on the bottom as a sludge, uh, that then two or three days later you mix it up, uh, and then you refrigerate it. But then then when you mix it up it's still crystal clear, colorless. And uh, so we think it's a lot more potent that way. The reason why I don't use the commercially uh, prepared solutions is because there's sort of a fluke uh, that the U.S. Pharmacopeia requires that ascorbate be made up by taking ascorbic acid, uh, mixing it in water, and then uh, buffering it with sodium hydroxide or sodium carbonate to a pH of 3.5 to 6.0, something like that. Well, I'm not sure that when we give large volume that if you that 3.5 is really okay. I, I, I'm, I don't know. I get peculiar calls from physicians around the country who have had troubles giving sodium ascor or ascorbate intravenously that I never see. But part of the problem, though, is that there seems to be a tendency that once you've got an IV going is that you put a lot of other stuff into the IV. But... But what I'm saying is, is that the solutions of sodium ascorbate, when you make them up right, I just, in my experience, they're just totally without any problems. Uh, it's very gentle on veins. Uh, we, I, I hear from the people who use uh, peroxide that one of the problems is that it sclerosis veins. Well, we just don't seem to have that trouble with, um, with uh, sodium ascorbate unless you add, start adding a lot of stuff to it. Now... Now, as far as complications are concerned, I just really haven't seen much of a problem with the uh, sodium ascorbate intravenously. Uh, Klinner described hypocalcemia. Now, maybe why I've never seen that is because uh, I only use this in my office, and so patients are ambulatory when they come in. It might be that if you have a seriously ill patient in the hospital, uh, or there might be some metabolic problems, that might cause uh, hypocalcemia, and Klinner recommended testing for the swastik, swastik sign, uh, and uh, I suppose it would be a good idea to do that if the person were really seriously ill, and he would add a vial of, of uh, calcium gluconate uh, into one bottle uh, every 24 hours. And say when they're sick in the hospital with something like a viral pneumonia, or such, or let's say they're, they've got their body 60% burned or something or other like that, then you'd probably use about, uh, you'd have the IV going continuously around the clock. And, I, you know, the standard thing is about uh, three liters 
of fluid, and in that uh, you could put in, uh, I guess, 360 uh, grams of, of sodium ascorbate if you wanted. I have absolutely not seen any trouble with the sodium. It, sodium ascorbate doesn't seem to behave at all like uh, sodium chloride. Uh, I, I have seen patients in heart failure diuresis uh, while sodium ascorbate was going. Uh, but now we do see a lot of dehydration so that I allow the patient, this, these solutions are quite uh, hypertonic and so that's why uh, I don't worry about, why, that's why I put it into pure water for the stock solutions because uh, we're not certainly not worrying about uh, hyper, or hypotonicity when uh, we're using it, when we're st uh, storing it as a 50% solution. Uh, we also see uh, hypoglycemia, uh, and so I encourage patients to bring in a sandwich or something to eat, and they're allowed to eat and drink water uh, throughout the, the, uh, the therapy. Also, uh, I have patients take ascorbic acid by mouth uh, while the sodium ascorbate is going intravenously, and this gives sort of a double whammy. Now, the diarrhea caused by ascorbic acid orally is a hypertonic situation in the rectum. Uh, the water comes in from the bloodstream to dilute out the hypertonic situation in the rectum, and that's what causes the diarrhea. Uh, intravenous ascorbate does not cause diarrhea, and in fact, it increases the tolerance to oral as ascorbic acid. And that's one of the many reasons that makes me think that, that the diarrhea is simply a uh, hypertonic situation. Now, frankly, I cannot get the ascorbate effect with the mineral ascorbates very frequently. Now, sodium ascorbate, by vein, they say the same thing, but I think that only about a fifth of the ascorbic acid that we take by mouth ever gets into the body, whereas 100% that we get by vein gets in, so therefore, uh, even, even if the sodium ascorbate is half as strong, maybe five, time gets, five times the amount gets into the body, so that makes it about two and a half times stronger, which is about right. That's been my experience that uh, intravenous ascorbate uh, works about, is about two and a half times more powerful as oral ascorbic acid. Uh, let's see. So then when we have that 50% uh, stock solution, then when we're going to use it, uh, we draw, draw it up into uh, 500 cc's of distilled water. Actually, we draw off 100, or 120 cc's and add 120 cc's of the stock solution. That's 60 grams into the 500 cc's. It says distilled water. We sometimes use lactated ringers. Uh, I, I use D5 very, very rarely. I hate sugar of all sorts. Um, and uh, so here I've got the patients off of sugars. I have a lot of hypoglycemic uh, patients and so forth, so then I give them a bottle of uh, D5 and they wonder, what, am I crazy or, or what? But anyway, uh, if I have a patient who is severely hypoglycemic, yeah, I might use D5, but uh, usually not. And uh, so absolutely no preservatives. Um, there's a little EDTA in that from the, but other than that, uh, it's just sodium ascorbate. Now, uh, the solution should take at least three hours to administer. You know, patients are always trying to push you to go faster. They can take it faster, there's no question. But it's just my thought that, that too much is excreted in the urine um, if we go too fast. I think there's an optimum rate. At luncheon, somebody was asking me about um, that since it's being lost in the urine, uh, then is it doing any good? Well, I think these are marginal amounts that we're absorbing when we do this. I said that uh, if uh, someone uh, drank 10 beers and was stopped by the highway patrol for drunk driving, that they should question the, the policeman and say, uh, well, if you drink one beer, the uh, uh, alcohol is coming out of the urine, right? And he'd say, right. Uh, so therefore, it's not possible to get drunker on 10 uh, beers than it is one beer. Well, I think that the idea that you can't get uh, more uh, grams of ascorbate with 100 grams given intravenously than you can uh, by taking one gram is, is just absolutely ridiculous. This concept of saturation, I mean, the thing is you can obviously eat ascorbate and have it administered to you faster 
uh, then you're able to excrete it. And I think the body has use for that. What we're trying to do is to push high levels of ascorbate into the tissues involved with the disease and to reduce that oxidative redox potential in the diseased tissues into a reducing redox potential. So, and, and yeah, theoretically, um, you can cut off all inflammations by neutralizing all free radicals. And, and that seems to be uh, what happens, and this happens very